Athena is a back office service provider. So we fall into the category of providing financial services. Uh, we do all of the, the transactional details, cutting uh, checks, financial, monthly financial reporting, um, bank reconciliations, mm -hmm. compliance reporting to the various entities. And um, so those would be SELPAs and your authorizers or the counties and then ultimately up to the state. And then any specialized grant reporting as well. But that is um, the technical work that we do on the, um, but what we really, um, pride ourselves on is bringing operational and strategic support and guidance to leaders of charter schools. When I first entered the charter industry, we were going through deferrals and from the Great Recession. And so I worked with a lot of schools on cash management and, and managing and being able to meet the obligations that they had and um, not overextending and making wise financial decisions. I've worked with a lot of, of schools. I can't exactly say the number. I would say it's somewhere between 30 to 40 different organizations that I've had the opportunity to work with. Every school is unique. And I think that's key to supporting them is to, to ensure that their specific unique vision is able to be carried out. I've been working with Ingenium for about five or six years now. I've worked with them as they have evolved into a four school CMO with two elementary schools and two middle schools. They serve an underprivileged, high free and reduced rate populations. And their goal is um, frequently said and on their website, ingeniumschools.org, is to bring joy and meaning to learning. Uh, a few years ago, Ingenium, I believe they were ready for expansion and they wanted to get into the independent study space. They were also getting a lot of pressure from parents to expand, to have a middle school um, for the students who were matriculating from Barack Obama um, Elementary School. And in a flourish, they expanded in the same year with both schools and very excited about it and a lot of energy behind it, but it was a lot for the organization, particularly when you're starting a new school, the startup cash that's required and the, de the deferrals, I mean, the delayed funding. And unfortunately the enrollment did materialize for them. And there was a lot of um, stressors on cash and it became a real effort. We were uh, monitoring the cash daily, working with Charter School Capital and the leadership. And it, for some, you know, that can be a very stressful and scary time. Here they are putting all of this energy into their vision, which is what charter leaders are, they're visionaries. And, and they, they want to bring more and they have all these fantastic ideas. And sometimes my job is, and frequently, is to give them a different perspective that's maybe a little more grounded or, you know, as someone said, just total, utter, brutal honesty. <laughs> so it was a tough time for cash flow for Ingenium for a year or for a few years because of this decision to expand too quickly, I will say. It took some repositioning and some reperceiving of things. Some of those uh, brutal honesty conversations from me. <laughs> and, and I am really, really honored that, that I have such a relationship with the leadership that I could give those um, perspectives and that we could find a happy middle ground and the schools are doing well today. They're financially stable and we are preparing for the deferrals now, but now we know we can manage through it because we've experienced it and we have a great team of people who can, can talk honestly and openly about what needs to be done. 
charter school capital was critical with Ingenium, not just in supporting their growth and expansion um, plans and activities, but in supporting them with dealing with the consequences of some of those things. So because of the close knit relationship that Ingenium and Charter School Capital had, they were able to really allow the organization to maintain stable cash flows at a time when things weren't as stable. You know, when you have two brand new schools that aren't meeting enrollment targets, your cash flows are tight and you don't, the last thing you would want to do is jeopardize the other schools that already exist within the organization. And Charter School Capital was always acutely aware of the organization as a whole and supporting the organization as a whole, not just oh, you need money to pay those bills, here you go. There was always a discussion, a conversation, and it was a strategic partnership with the organization. And it was like a second financial voice working with you. And I appreciated that. And I always felt that Charter School Capital's primary goal was to ensure the longevity and the long-term financial health of the schools that they were selling receivables with. And that's what I really um, appreciated because schools do get, there are times when it is, it's a, it's a definite need to, to borrow, to do receivable sales. If you have a partner that's really looking at the long term of like, okay, this is a bridge to get you through this situation, not a long term solution. And that is always thinking about, you know, the day when they're no longer borrowing and how do we get to that day? Because I'm always focused on that and working with charter school capital in making sure that, that the decisions that were being made about borrowing were intelligent and long and supported the long-term success of the organization.